السلام عليكم اسقوا عيقا عام a mountain or a valley and what are some of the topographic and geographic features in Mecca of relevance to Abdullah ibn Zubair رضي الله عنه After a complex, tragic, and eventful time period from the martyrdom of the great Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu an in 40 Hijri, which correlates to 661, in Kufa of Al-Iraq, the painful martyrdom of his son Al-Hussein radiallahu an at Karbala in 680, and finally the death of Yazid in 683. Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu an became caliph and his capital was in Mecca. Of course, the Umayyads in Asham, after some hesitation, decided not to pledge allegiance to Ibn Zubair and instead rallied behind Marwan ibn al-Hakam and after him, his son Abd al-Malik ibn Marwan. Many important events in both Iraq and Yemen had taken place. But to be brief, after several victories, Abd al-Malik bin Marwan sent the corrupt and disgraceful commander named Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi with an army to end Abdullah ibn Zubair's caliphate. Al-Hajjaj shockingly attacked Mecca and killed ibn Zubair radiallahu anh, in 692. I just mentioned some huge topics such as the martyrdom of Ali and Al-Hussein radiallahu anhum that are worthy of a detailed and nuanced analysis and also skipped many other events also worthy of a careful review. But that's only because this video is focused on presenting some of the topographical and geographical features in Mecca that almost everyone gets wrong and which are related to Abdullah and also his father, Zubair radiallahu anh. So let's get to it. Abdullah's father, the great companion, Zubair ibn al-Awwam ibn Khuwaylid radiallahu an, lived in this property in Mecca, next door to his relative, Hakim bin Hizam ibn Khuwaylid radiallahu an, and both of them are the nephews of their aunt Khadija bint Khuwaylid radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers and wife of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the other side, of Zubair's property was a property known to belong to Al-Harith ibn Abdullah ibn Rabi'a, which means that his father, the Prophet's companion, Abdullah ibn Rabi'a radiallahu an, most likely lived in this home during this time period. Between Zubair's property and Al-Harith's was a small property where the house of a former slave of Khuza'a named Durafa used to live. Of course, Khuza'a are the important tribe which had controlled Mecca for almost 500 years prior to Qusay bin Kilab taking over and uniting his people to form the tribe Quraysh, who are the descendants of Ismail. Let me know if you want a video about Khuza'a and Qusay bin Kilab in the comments. It's definitely an interesting history. Anyway, in front of Zubair's property, and in fact, in front of his house, was the well known as the Well of Sumbula, which was on the property of the cursed Ubay bin Khalaf, the enemy of Islam, who eventually died in the Battle of Uhud. Between Zubair ibn al Awwam and his neighbor Hakim ibn Hazam was a wall with an opening that led to the house on Hakim's property or the engagement for the marriage of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Khadija radiallahu anha took place. As for Zubair's son, Abdullah, when he became caliph, his capital was Mecca and he purchased two homes in the Qa'iqa'an Valley, which is this valley over here overlooked by Mount Araf, which was also known during this time period as Mount Ahmar. This mountain later became known as Mount Qa'iqa'an because it overlooked the Qa'iqa'an Valley. And this is why many sheikhs today, when you ask them about Qa'iqa'an, 
they think of this mountain. And this is problematic because Qa'i is mentioned in authentic Sahih Hadith. And if people think it's a mountain, they cannot fully understand that specific Hadith. Mount A'raf was part of a large mountain feature which included Jabal al-Nar, Zurzur, Qarn Abil Ash'ath, and Mount Habashi. As for Mount and nar I say about it in the new 3D interactive map I'm developing with our brothers from RenderLounge.com and both of us intend to make it freely available to you all, praying that Allah accept this work which we have volunteered to create for the sake of the Ummah and to support a better understanding of the Prophet's Seerah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jabal al-Nar This mountain obtained its name, which means Mountain of the Fire, after a fire ravaged the homes of local residents, burning them to the ground. All of the homes at the base of the mountain were tragically destroyed. Although this incident took place prior to the time of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, the mountain continued to be known as the Mountain of the Fire for many centuries afterwards. On its eastern side, the valley was bordered by Mount Daylami, Mount Sheba, al khafub and Mount Abiyal. Of course, this Mount Abiyal should not be confused with Mount Abiyal at Kuda or Mount Abiyal, which was known as al Mustandar, both of which we can address in a future video if you want to. So let me know in the comments. During the Caliphate of Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu an, when the tax caravans entered Mecca from the north, they used to have to enter deep into the heart of Mecca and then do a U-turn around Mount Daylami in order to go into the Qa'iqa'an Valley where Abdullah's two homes were located. To avoid this and to make life easier for the Meccans, Abdullah commanded that a path called Al-Falaq to be cut at the north of the valley to facilitate travel to and from the valley via its northern end. And this passage became known as Falaq ibn Zubair. When Hajjaj al thaqafis army, after a despicable attack on Mecca, killed Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu an, they hung his body on a cross at Mount Habashi, which is this mountain which we mentioned earlier. I hope this clarifies some of the geographic features in Mecca. For much more and the sources and references, see my book Mecca at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe, and until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.